Hey, welcome back. We're the Kampai guys. We Kampai, so you don't have to. Unless you want to. Uh, today we're going to talk about Kikambo Ramen. This is a very popular spicy miso ramen shop in Tokyo. Not a chain, they have a couple of stores overseas, but in Japan only based in Tokyo. And uh, recently they released a convenience store cup noodle version. But before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Alright, Kikanbo. So actually, I've been to this restaurant in Tokyo、uh, a few times. I think two times actually. And it was at your recommendation. I'm curious, how did you find out about this place?、Uh, I think I first saw it on a popular YouTube channel that I follow. Oh, okay. So it was a YouTube recommendation.、Mm. Okay, cool. A、uh, very popular channel, Mike Weens. So he's a very popular food YouTuber. Ah, okay. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get the、uh, shout out back one day. Yeah. So, well, give us a, a million subscribers probably overnight. So, yeah, he's a very big fan of spicy food. Like, his motto on his t shirt is if it ain't spicy, I ain't eating it. So, Damn. Okay. But he eats like crazy spicy Thai food.、Uh, but he came to Japan. He's come to Japan a few times. And I guess he must have just found out it's the, one of the spiciest ramens in Tokyo with、uh, Nakamoto, which we talked about before.、Uh, so, yeah, I watched his video. Looked pretty good. Yeah.、So、check it out. Seemed kind of up my alley. Yeah. Well, I can attest to this. I've been there and I've tried their signature ramen, and it is quite spicy. Also, quite unique. Like everything、mm. about that place.、Mm. The, The atmosphere, the branding,、mm. the logo, the, even, even the presentation、mm. like、of the bowl of ramen that you、sure. get.、Yeah. It's all you know, very. It's already designed. Yeah. It's already deliberate, I think. Lots of thought was put into everything. S- speaking of which, the name Kikanbo. What's up with Kikanbo? So,、uh, indeed, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably bring it up on the screen right now, but it's,、uh, it's kind of an unusual mix of kanji. I think they just put these characters together. I don't know if they made a new word, to be honest. It's a very、um, unique name. If you ask a lot of Japanese people, like, how would you write kikanbo? I'm sure there are so many words that could be kikanbo, so they won't know which combination of kanji it is. But basically, it means the, like a devil's club. Or a demon's club. So if you look at the logo of Kikambo, or if you go to the store itself, you'll find there are lots of like blue or red demons holding this like bat thing with like spikes sticking out of it. It looks very medieval, but like a Japanese medieval kind of. It's like a Negan's bat if it was、yeah. medieval Japanese, I guess.、So、Negan's bat. Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Oh, okay, okay.、So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure many of our viewers will know Nikon's bat.、Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if, the, if you go to the store, there are like, lots of bats like, on the wall or sticking out of the wall, right? And lots of demon masks and very unusual music playing as well. How would you describe the music? The music, I would describe it as chamber music from hell. Like clinking of chains and like very atmospheric.、Mm. I don't know. It gives you very like, like you're in a hell dungeon basically. <laughs> But it's got a very like Asian vibe、yeah. to it as well. It's a very. It's、uh, not like Western. It's very like Japanese、music. mythological yeah. vibe. Like from an old woodblock print or something. Right. Like yeah.、That. I've actually seen a Japanese horror movie called Jigoku. It's like a hell, that means hell in Japanese. And it's like a very old 70s movie. And they have that kind of like chanting and hitting taiko drum kind、mm-hmm. of sounds. But it warns you of the, 
the spiciness to come, I think. So. Yeah, so this restaurant is very popular. It is, yeah. yeah. There's always a line. Always. always. I've been there twice, and both times there was a line, hmm. like, way, like, out into the street. I think I, I waited 30 minutes, and I was lucky. Have you only been at lunchtime? I went in the evening, and... Oh, okay. I also went right when they opened. Mm. Even when they open, like... Yeah, there'd be people already waiting outside. They open, I think, before noon. But even then, I got there, like, right on time. And there was a line on, like, just a, you know, standard weekday. I think be aware, if you come to Japan and you're planning to go to a very famous ramen shop, and you know they open at 12, you can almost guarantee there'd be a line at 11. When, when restaurants get popular in Japan, they get popular <laughs> <laughs> there's a bagel shop in matsuyama with people waiting outside 30 minutes before so. navy bagels that's right dude yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it's not even a new shop Sh- yeah. shout out by the way good place <laughs> <laughs> yeah be aware of that so yeah if you do come and you're planning to visit a very popular place make sure you go early or you check like a not peak time right yeah i think kikambo is probably not that busy around like three or four p.m like really Especially with places like ramen or, or curry, mm. you know, places like that get, get really popular through reviews or mm. like blogs. Also, ramen shops have a lot of followers. Yeah. Well. They have a lot yeah. of fans who it's, go to that shop. It's best to plan ahead. It's almost like tribal ramen fans. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of YouTubers that cover yeah. ramen. They're like people who get angry if you diss yeah. this ramen shop or something. So. Hell, even like here in Matsuyama, where we live, which is yeah. pretty countryside compared to Tokyo, we have our fair share of super popular ramen shops that, sure. you know, get a queue out the door yeah. on a daily basis. Too. That's right. So maybe we should talk a little bit about the ordering system for this ramen. Yeah. Because it's a little bit different to other ramen shops. So like most ramen shops in Japan, when you order, You'll order from a vending machine. So you want to choose which item you want first. If you haven't been before, if you're kind of nervous about ordering, Mm -hmm. you might not want to go in front of like some Japanese ramen fan behind you. (laughs) (laughs) They might get impatient. Like speed is very important in ramen shops. Um, But usually it's not like super fast entering that one. So you have some time. Uh, basically there'll be a bunch of options so you can get like just a little bit of everything so a little bit of pork corn bamboo shoots maybe yeah was on top so. in there. Oh, eggs right? yes um soft boiled eggs soft boiled yeah. eggs i guess we should say what kind of ramen it is right? it's a yeah it's a miso ramen okay um it's a seafood pork based miso ramen i think so if you have any allergies, probably not for you, this one. Right. I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, there's I no mean, like vegetarian stuff there, as far as I know. You can probably say that about most ramen. 95%. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a spicy miso ramen. And the, I guess they're most famous for adding chili pepper and Chinese pepper to it. I think that's the signature point of this place. Yep is like it's super spicy but again chili pepper but also i think in america you call it shishuan pepper shishuan pepper yeah, yeah I think uh, so. like chinese yeah. pepper like the very like tingly mm. like numbing type mm. so when you order you can choose the spice level of both types of spices mm. yeah i think there are five levels so you can get completely without which would just be the miso base you can get added a little chili, a little Chinese pepper, futsu, which means regular, mashi, which means extra, and oni mashi. Oni is devil in Japanese, so devil extra. Yeah. Uh, if you order anything below mashi, it comes in a white bowl. That's right. If you order yeah. oni, it comes in a black bowl. Yeah. So everyone will look over at you and say, well, that guy's super badass. Yeah. yeah. So if you have spice tolerance, you can yeah. be the envy of like everyone in the restaurant. Super badass two times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beware, Oni is intense. I've had it twice. Yeah. So. I think I ordered 
uh, Futsu or mm. you know standard regular both times I went mm. and it was spicy yeah but also it's like super delicious very mm. flavorful like so many like flavor notes mm. on the palate yeah. like it's definitely worth trying out it's yeah. it's not a gimmicky place at all no nope. it's pure quality yeah everything is very well made i think yeah. the probably the chashu is maybe the most popular item like even above the soup to be honest yeah the chashu or like the what do you call it sliced pork sliced pork yeah, yeah. their chashu is a bit different to other shops like they use like star anise cinnamon like chinese spices medicinal herbs mm. so it has like a very medicinal taste I think they're using like pork belly for it and like other ramen shops you'll get like a slice cross section chasu like a piece of ham right but in this shop you get like a whole block of chashu they literally just cut it into like a brick mm -hmm. shape but it just falls apart right it's so tender they cook it for a very long time also if i remember correctly at the restaurant you can buy like kikanbo branded beer you can buy a spice pack. Yeah, yeah. A little can of spices. Yeah, you can it's actually like get some of their spice that you can beer too, really. buy. I ordered a beer there, a beer there once. I for did. Sure. I got uh, Ebis there. It's so Ebis. They had like a branded Kikanbo beer when I went. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Really? Unless I'm like totally making this up. I don't think I am mm. though. Yeah, I tried to get a t-shirt. They wear this really cool t-shirt there. But they're like, staff only. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so when ordering at the vending machine, you'll notice they have a chart and on one side is a red demon and the other side is a blue demon. Do you know what they represent? I always assumed, um, it just seemed very thematic to me. I always assumed that the red demon was like the chili pepper mm, that's and, right. the, and the blue was the Chinese pepper. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's really clever actually. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's very easy to understand so yeah actually this shop does have english on the sign so i think they get a lot of uh, overseas customers mm. so i think they actually speak english as well a little bit the stuff oh, okay. so yeah they can definitely help you and he'll probably say oh no very spicy or something <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to try the oni just say no no it's okay i go yeah. oni i go hard yeah yeah, try the Oni level of spice at your own risk. At your own risk. I wouldn't recommend that getting that the first time. I didn't, so I would get that the second time. I might try it time. next time, which would be really? the third time for me. That's about right. I think. Yeah. 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 Once you go Oni, you don't go back. Think, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we should uh, talk about the location of this shop. So, yeah, yeah. It's uh, located near Tokyo Station, just one shop. East? One stop east from Tokyo Station. Mm. And, uh, if you get off at Kanda Station, actually, it's pretty nearby. You can walk there mm. from the station. Be careful if you do go there, they have two shops. So the one on the corner is a dipping uh, ramen shop, a skimmin shop. And around the corner is the main uh, ramen, bowl ramen shop. Ah, yeah, so, I noticed that when I went there. Yeah. It's the same company, right? It's the exact same shop. They just have two kinds of ramen. So. Okay, so... I've never had the skimmer. Before. Yeah, me neither. So it's the same shop, but there's two different entrances. Mm. Yeah, e even the main shop is quite small. Like, you can only uh, sit at the bar counter. It's like 15 capacity? Yeah. Like, something like that, I think. Yeah. But with ramen, like... It's not like a dining experience. You don't stay there a long time. Like, you eat and leave. Right. Yeah, it's very in and out. <laughs> and if you don't leave, they might get angry. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It's like, sit down, eat, go. Like, yeah. So... It's not really a place to relax. Well, let's talk a little bit about the uh, products they've released. So, this is a cup ramen. I think it's the second or third one they've done. Yeah, this is not the first collaboration mm. Kikanbo has done I think a few years ago like back in 2018 or 2017 they released another cup noodle version at Family Mart in Japan mm. which is a local convenience store I, don't, I can't really tell that they've like changed anything about it since the last one it looks very similar just like the actual 
the average level uh, spice and Chinese pepper. And on the top it has a little sachet of uh, hot oil, I think, spice oil, Ryu. And that one you're supposed to just leave on the top while it's heating up. Hmm, okay. And add it at the end. So it only has one sachet, as far as I can tell. Okay, so it says here, you know, five minutes, is that the... Five minutes, yeah. So the, average. Is that the prep time? That's the cooking time. Cooking time. Yeah. And it looks like it's just got, like, the regular toppings, so maybe some meat, rehydrated meat, yep. corn, some green onions, something like that. I'm expecting, obviously spicy, but mm. I'm expecting it to lack the flavor depth and the creaminess and genuine texture mm. of the original. Mm. Yeah, like a very good thing about Kikambo is the quality of the toppings, yeah, which like, you're not going to get in a cup ramen. But I'm still looking forward to it. I guess the best we can hope for is that it has some kind of like essence of Kikambo. All right, you want to jump in? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so we've prepped the noodles and we are ready to dig in. Yeah, we are. It smells pretty good, I think. Very unique scent to this. Yeah. Not like your typical cup noodle at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's some kind of Chinese scent. Yeah. Going on. Hmm. It's not a very pungent scent, but it is very unique. Mm. It sounds like a lemony, like a lemongrassy scent or something like yeah. that going on. Visually, it you know looks like your typical cup noodle. I think the secret for this one is the sauce, the or soup. Yeah. The soup. Mm. Yeah. It's got quite a deep color, kind of yeah. nice like oil sheen. On yeah. Top. So I think that's the unique part of yeah. this one. That's probably what they've worked the most on. Yeah. I think the other toppings are probably just like standard. All right, you want to dig in? in? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Instantly spicy. Very aromatic. Very aromatic. It's got like a kind of Chinese spice, slightly citrusy taste. You get that? Citrusy, like like sancho. Yeah. 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 Like uh, Japanese mm. pepper. Not Chinese pepper, Japanese pepper. Yeah. Sancho taste. But the initial, <clears throat> like, spicy, what would you say? Initial s spiciness? Like the shock of the spiciness. It's... Yeah, the initial spice shock is the chili pepper. It's more of a, like, in your mouth than in your throat. Yeah. Chili pepper. It's not insanely spicy or anything. It's kind of pleasantly warming. Yeah. Spiciness. It's not intense in any way. Yeah. I'm sure that's by design. Yeah. This is more for a like an entry, uh, yeah. like general consumer compared yeah. to people that would actively seek out the restaurant. But considering this is cup noodle, it's pretty yeah. impressive, I think. I guess we should try the noodles. So yeah, cheers. Cheers. Again, very standard, you know, uh, dehydrated noodles, but yep. it does add to the soup. Yeah. Mm. It tastes better with the noodles, I think. I think what I like about it is the the noodles are holding on to the soup. Mm -hmm. No corn. No corn, no egg. Yeah. No... I mean, you could add your own egg. This is beef or pork? It tastes like mystery meat. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. If you were to purchase this, if you wanted to really kick this up a notch, I would say add an egg and some sliced pork to it. Yeah. That would take up a notch, yeah. yeah. You could actually grill your own baby corn and put that on top. Yeah, corn too, yeah. I would add a bit more Sichuan pepper mm -hmm. to it. For sure. It has a very shichimi taste to it. Hmm, okay. And shichimi tends to have like little black sesame seeds and some kind of floral chili powder mixed in. Seven spice mix. It tastes quite a lot like that to me. I can see where you're coming <clears> from. I'm quite impressed. If you ate this without knowing it's kikambo, would you know it's kikambo? Probably not. Really? Honestly. Again, when I think of kikambo, I think of the like charred baby corn Yep. and the egg, you know, and all the toppings. I feel this is more designed to get people's attention to go to the shop. Exactly. For mm. kikambo, I think this is more 
an advertisement expense. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> like an edible advertisement. I would imagine. <laughs> it's a, like... Actually, my own recommendation <clears throat> for those living in Japan or currently in Japan, if you're not sure whether or not you would like the spiciness of the actual Kifanbo ramen, I would say pick this up first. And if you enjoy it, then I think you're going to enjoy the legit ramen from the shop mm. even yeah. more. If this is spicy for you, do not get the oni, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Definitely not. Probably do not get the mashi either. That one's pretty hardcore too. Kanpai scores. Kanpai is six kanpais. Six out of ten. Uh, my reason is that I actually like it. it. has a lot of like good taste in the soup. And of course, as someone who's already been to the shop, Mm -hmm. knows what the actual real cacambo tastes like right uh it's not gonna like match up to that oh obviously a big issue is if we were blindfolded we wouldn't know this was cacambo i think exactly that's the problem with it so that's the biggest problem with it i think i guess for me i'm gonna read this in the context of the world of cup noodle okay so i'm gonna go with seven okay on this yeah that makes sense obviously i would prefer this to have egg in it or Mm. you know baby corn Mm. but your typical cup noodle doesn't, doesn't have that either. Have those things, so, so yeah, I can't really hold that against it, considering it's trying to be more cup noodle than mm. a legit dish. So I guess we need to cool off. So we've had uh, a little bit spicy food right now. Some ice cream or something. <sighs> that sounds pretty good. Some ice cream. Do you have something? Sure. Sweet and refreshing. How about this, dude? Again. Again? <laughs> You're killing me, dude. I'm pretty sure that's not ice cream. Could be. You don't know. I see blood red and I see a skull. Usually that's a bad sign. Yeah. Usually that doesn't mean ice cream. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what this is? Uh, some kind of katsu, katsu snack, I guess. Katsu. Katsu snack. Pork? Is it pork? Fried pork? I guess so. That's what katsu is, right? Fried pork. Uh, mm, not always. Um, you can have like chicken katsu, right? Sure. Mm. So this is a dried snack, right? I think this is going to be similar to like an old school sweet Japanese snack, but... It's hard to explain. We don't have those in the West because yeah. it actually tastes like breadcrumbs. It's like fried breadcrumbs with like a sweet sauce. But it's in like a vacuum packed, like a candy wrapper. Yeah. It's very interesting. This one has habanero in it. Habanero? Right. Yeah. Thanks, dude. <laughs> You're always hooking me up with the best stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> I got this in Don Quixote. Okay. 200 yen. Man, those are pretty thick. Looks dirty. Like burn marks. <laughs> <laughs> so a cinnamon toast crunch went sunbathed. In a yeah. Bit. Though I'm not expecting a sweet cinnamon. Came back flavor like a old, this. old burnt to crisp orange grandma yeah. or something. Yeah. They came back from the war. They're not looking too hot. Cremated. 80 year old grandma sometime yeah if it has a caution like a like there's a traffic what do you say like a roadworks coming up or something it's like a little warning sign uh usually when things have that it doesn't end well all right dude i'm just gonna dig in i don't want to just torture myself anymore wow that's so funny like, the texture is kind of like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a slight sweetness. Initial sweetness. Yeah. And then the... Pain is coming. The pain. Pain is brewing. It's it's not bashing down the door. No. It's slowly crawling in. Like it's, like an ooze under the doorway. It's like someone's just like lighting your bottom of your trousers. Yeah. I'm just feeling the It's coming in like coming this. Up. It does have that very habanero taste, that very distinct, like, American chili pepper. Mm -hmm. Not like a Japanese pepper, like a Mm -hmm. Western, like a Carolina Reaper habanero. You dig this? Yeah, nice texture. Like some really firm bread. Yeah, that's a good way to explain it. Like bread covered in breadcrumbs and then fried. Not your typical, like, white breakfast bread, but like, you know, like a baguette or something. I dig it. It's good. I feel like the more you eat, it doesn't get spicier. Like if you ate one, if you ate three, it's mm-hmm. kind of the same. It, it kind of topped out for me. Well, was that a good dessert? Surprisingly, yes. 
Is this what you eat for dessert at home? I would. I pick, do. I do. I would pick this up again. Vampires. I would say six. Six. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Six. Well, we hope you enjoyed another spicy episode of Campai Guys. Of course, we will be trying out other spicy stuff at some point yep. soon. Uh, if you have any requests for any spicy food you'd like us to try, please let us know. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. See you. Peace.